What are you doing? Excuse me. Do you mind? <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. <laughs> I know that was a terrible intro. Hey everybody, welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. My name is Kat, this is my corgi Ellie, and this is my vlog channel where I talk about random stuff, share my biased opinion, and vlog pretty much just random. <laughs> and if you've been here before, I do do, I do do, I do story times sometimes. And if you've been here before, you already know, since I have my wine, that it is time for another one. Ellie, do you mind? Gary, my boyfriend, says I look like I should be in the Flintstones with this uh, PJ's getup that I'm wearing. First, come a little closer. And this isn't just a normal story time. This is the good, the bad, and the ugly of acting and modeling. And I'm sure all of you are asking how have any knowledge in this field. Well, if you do follow me on my social media, which is linked down in the description below, you'll notice that I do do... Okay, I'll stop. I do still do some modeling here and there. I don't do acting as much because there's really not that many opportunities in my area. But a lot of you may not know, some of you may know. Right after high school, I moved out to California and tried my hand at acting and modeling. And today, that's what we're going to talk about. My experiences in the entertainment industry. The good, the bad, and the ugly. So I've actually been acting ever since I was a kid. I mean, I guess we all have when we are playing pretend, but I don't know, I feel like I went the extra mile as a kid. I would make up my entire character, a whole background story, a whole plot. I would make up the characters of my, of the people I was playing with. I'd make up that, their background story. You know, maybe I'm just a control freak. I didn't start to really get into acting until I had my very first class, my very first drama class in middle school. And ever since then, I stayed in drama, I stayed in the acting scene, and I absolutely loved it. I have always had so much fun making up these characters, being in these roles, pretending to be somebody else was just always so much fun. In high school, I actually had the opportunity to go to a acting and modeling school called John Robert Powers. A lot of people scoff at these kind of schools because they do cost quite a bit of money and most people think they're scams. But to be honest, even though it did cost a lot of money and maybe that part was a scam, I learned so much at John Robert Powers and they actually gave me an opportunity to go to something called a showcase. This one was being held in Vegas and my brother and my mom helped me pay to fly out there and showcase my talents to casting directors, casting agents, managers, producers, directors, people in the entertainment industry. You also got to network and make friends with fellow actors and actresses, dancers, singers, people in the entertainment industry. And when I went to Vegas, so many people told me that I needed to move out to California, that that's where I was going to book the most jobs and get the most work and I needed to do it soon. So I convinced my parents to allow me to move to California with my cousin right after high school. I was able to save over a thousand dollars from my graduation funds to help us basically move out to Cali. And my cousin was in the Navy and he was living off of the GI Bill. So it was supporting us a little bit. And when I got, when I got out there, I got a part-time job as well to help support us. So a couple of great things that happened while I was out in California. 
was I did get to do a lot of extra work, a lot of featured background work, so I learned a lot. I got a lot of experience just being on set, which was really exciting, really fun. You know, from being on set for nine hours as featured background, I actually made some pretty good money, and if I can, I will try and link the Pepsi commercial that I was in down in the description below. It was actually with the boy band The Wanted. I don't know if anybody remembers them or not. I kind of don't know where they went. They had like two good songs and then disappeared, like fell off the face of the earth. I have no idea where they went, but they were great guys. <laughs> it was a really fun day and like I said, I made some good money. They sang that song, I'm Glad You Came. I'm a terrible singer, so I'm going to, uh, I also don't want to be copyrighted, so I'm going to high pitch voice this high pitch mix. And that's all I know of the song. Did you like my dance? <laughs> I have no idea what that was. You, do you have to sit like that? Can't you like lay down and sit back comfortably? You're gonna fall off my lap. <laughs> um, I had I met some great photographers and <laughs> had some great photo shoots and again got some amazing experience from that. So those are the good things that happened in California and the good things about acting and modeling. Or at least what I experienced. I didn't get to travel or anything like that. Um, I know other people would say that traveling is a good part of acting and modeling, getting to, you know, experience the void. Now we're going to get into the bad. So I first want to put in a trigger warning here. This does delve into sexual assault. This is something that I truly experienced and I want to keep it in here and I think it's really important to talk about it because I think unfortunately a lot of people can relate to my story and it's a very real factor of the entertainment industry. I mean we all know this now with the Me Too movement and everything that's come out about Harvey Weinstein and a plethora of other people, unfortunately. These are a couple of my experiences that happened out in California. So, let's get into it. My very first audition when we got out to California, oh, by the way, we didn't live in Los Angeles, we actually lived 50 miles south in Palmdale, California, in the middle of Mojave Desert. So that was one thing that really went against me and made it really difficult for me to get to auditions, especially because auditions can be at a drop of a hat, or even if they're literally the next day, it's hard for me, it was hard for me to ask off work. Okay, so my very first audition, my cousin actually found on a pamphlet on campus, and it was for a adult comedy. And to us, an adult comedy meant like crude humor, raunchy humor, cussing, that kind of thing. Maybe some violence. So we end up going to this apartment complex and the director meets us outside and tells us that it's a closed audition, which sounds super formal and sounds super legit and there are tons of red flags, but I did not see them as a naive 18 year old just moving out to California. And I was a very sheltered child too. So. This was all a very new experience for me. But, you know, I said, okay, closed, closed set, closed audition, totally sounds normal. So we end up going inside, me and him by ourselves, and we get into his apartment. It's literally a one bedroom apartment with like a wind an AC window unit I mean I'm not really judging but at the same time I'm judging like <laughs> it's not where you have an audition and we start talking about the role and the scene and in the scene the girl is actually in some underwear lingerie getup and he asks me to take my dress off and he's getting his camera ready and I 
don't even really question him in my mind I just rationalize it as well it's for the role and there's tons of actors and actresses who get down into their get down into their skivvies or get naked for a role so I thought in my mind well I'll be in my underwear and my bra that's just like being in a swimsuit so okay like my cousin is right outside everything's fine so I start reading my lines in my underwear and he has the camera and he brings he brings the camera up close to to my face and then he starts scanning down my body and as he scans down my body when he reaches my he ends up touching me and I'm like so taken aback I have I have no idea what to say or how to react and instead of reacting I completely freeze and for years I hated myself and blamed myself and felt so ashamed because I had no idea that freezing <laughs> why did I say it like that that freezing is just another part of fight or flight it's fight flight freeze it's a reaction that a lot of people don't mention and don't talk about and so I thought it was all my fault because I didn't even voice to him how uncomfortable he had just made me and I still didn't say anything I ended up getting the role and while he's like talking to me telling me that I got the role and that at the next steps were this that and the other thing he also tried to tell me that like I needed to help pay for some materials and and as he said that like I completed my like my mind like blanked out and everything like went muffled and I was just like I can't believe this is fake it's such a scam it's totally fake and he just touched me and now I just want to get out of here so bad so we wrapped it up ended up hugging him just trying to play it cool and I got dressed I ended up running out of there and the minute I got outside I called my mom and my dad and my cousin was overhearing the entire conversation and I told them what just happened I was crying I was so upset my cousin tried to go back inside the the apartment building but it was locked so he couldn't get in and the next day when we called him called the director of course he was saying that he didn't realize that anything was wrong like I didn't say anything I didn't do anything um, I was lying that I wanted the role all of this bullshit and I ended up just telling my cousin to drop it and I just wanted to forget about it I really didn't feel like I had a case or anything so I didn't report it and ended up just putting it out of my mind I also had various photographers try to coax me into doing boudoir shots or nude shots or didn't just coax, insisted on trying to get me to do these kind of photo shoots at 18 and I know some women are okay with that and I'm all for that but I did not want to start my career and my portfolio in that way plus I was so naive and so innocent like I just felt like people were trying to take advantage of me at this point and like it just wasn't a good look but the last straw that made me finally decide to come home from California I had already been out there for about a year and a half almost two years and I had received a lead role in an independent film and I was so excited so excited because I thought that you know this could be my big break it's an independent film you know the production company was legit the audition was legit it went so smoothly everything went great until I met the director for my first rehearsal so I meet the director at a studio in Los Angeles and we're there by ourselves and he tells me that instead of paying for an actor to play opposite me he was gonna end up playing the role and I thought okay that's totally fine I mean directors like Quentin Tarantino are in their films all the time so that's totally normal but the thing was this role did comprise of a sex scene now it was supposed to be a classy sex scene I got to pick out my lingerie 
I had read the scene prior, it really did not sound too bad. And it was a very short clip in the entire film. But when I met him at his studio, he told me this, and I had said okay, and instead of rehearsing lines or anything like that, he just wants to make out. He wants to make out and get a feel for me and feel our chemistry, basically, I think is what he said. And in this situation, I'm tense, I don't really know what to do, and I feel, and of course, every like all of these thoughts are racing through my head, like, is this really how they audition? Is this really how people rehearse? Do they go right for the, the most intense scenes? I really had no idea. I had no one coaching me or telling me. I had a agent at the time, but this was actually a job I had found out, outside of him. So that was probably another red flag, to be honest. So the director can sense that I'm tense, and we stop, and he says, I can tell you're tense, I can tell you like you're not relaxed, how about I just ask you some questions so I can get to know you better. And I said, okay, sure, that's that, that'll that work. Like, yeah, let's get to know each other a little bit better so I can feel a little bit more comfortable. Um, so first the questions are fine, but then he starts asking me questions like, Do you use toys when you play with yourself? And he asked if, I don't know, I don't want to say it, I don't want to say it on camera, but um, he just asked really raunchy, dirty questions that I don't think people ask to get to know each other better for a role. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I am completely wrong, maybe that is how it goes. <laughs> I don't think that's how it goes, I can't believe that that's how auditions, rehearsals go. So I ended up getting really teary-eyed, like I was answering his questions but I started getting really tense and even more teary-eyed. And then this woman shows up. I, th I don't remember who it was. I don't know if it was his assistant or what, but she shows up and he asks if he can have a moment. And I said, yeah, that's totally fine. I'm going to call someone. I end up leaving completely, like just leaving. And I call my dad and I start crying and telling him exactly what happened. And he said, you know, baby, I think it's time that you came home. You tried it, but there's just a lot of pain and at this point I was so depressed and just so lonely and just missing my family and my friends and I was just I was just seeing the negative instead of the positives that ha that had happened because it was more negatives because besides all of this even though I was going to auditions through my agent and through myself I was getting mostly no's which is a big part of the industry is rejection which I'm kind of thankful for but at the same time, I was very depressed during that time. <laughs> really, the bad of it, the dark part of the industry, is people that want to take advantage of naive, innocent actors, actresses, singers, dancers, people that are trying to follow their dreams get taken advantage of. You know, that's not even half of it. If you want to, if you need to travel to get to New York or Los Angeles for auditions, then you you know, your agents and managers usually aren't fronting you that that cost. So there's travel, then there's cost of materials to market yourself, like comp cards and portfolios. You know, that costs a pretty penny as well. You know, it costs money to keep up on your look, to keep up on your hygiene, to keep up on, you know, your beautiful face. I mean, it it's not just there, you do have to work at it. Does that sound stupid? It does sound stupid. But you do have to work at it, you do. One of the, this is one of the biggest reasons why I kind of quit actively pursuing acting and modeling was because I even had the opportunity to move to New York recently. I had gone to another showcase out in Chicago back in November and I was pretty successful. I had gotten a few callbacks from different managers and agents and I had actually won a $10,000 scholarship to the New York School of Performing Arts, which was so exciting. I was I was so honored. But then I found out that it's $50,000 per semester and I had no idea how I was going to pay for that, let alone find a job in New York and live by myself. 
and my mom straight up told me that she wasn't going to be able to help me pay if I couldn't pay for the rent or if I couldn't get groceries. Like, she just wasn't going to be able to. And I respect that, but that scared me even more because I didn't know what I was going to do if I wasn't going to be able to afford rent or uh, afford to eat. You know, my mom, I've been living with my mom for a while now and... She's always been able to help me because we have that combined budget. But if I was living in New York, we wouldn't have this combined budget anymore. But the financial stress plays into the mental stress. But also the part of the mental stress is that you're working with so many people that are entitled, that think they're better than you, or think they know everything, or just outright jerks or assholes. And you know, unfortunately, I fucked up. There was a manager who was really willing to, was really interested in me from that showcase in Chicago. And even though he was in New Orleans, he really wanted to work with me. And I was so excited at first. But we had a miscommunication. And the moment the miscommunication happened, he emailed me and said, I haven't received the items I requested, so good luck to you. And it took him four or five hours to respond back to my apologies, to my sending the requested information, to letting him know that when we spoke that he said that I had more time. It took him five hours, and in that five hours, I had a panic attack. I cried my eyes out. I just was so mentally distraught and I know that's my fault I know that's on me but the fact that people just don't give you even the time of day or they just don't give you a chance and I guess I understand from his point of view that he probably sees a lot of flaky girls but it really was just a miscommunication you know he told me that I had had more time and I don't know if he forgot or what but I had proof that he had given me more time and he was willing to talk to me again after the whole miscommunication, but like almost had forgotten who I even was. And it made me just feel like absolute <laughs> And it made me think, why do I want to work in an industry where people make you feel like this a lot of the time? And especially a manager. You know, maybe I'm allowing doubt and fear to rule my life and take away this career from me, but my this kind of goes into my next factor which is the financial and mental toll play a huge factor in the physical stress when i was in california i wasn't sick i didn't get gastroparesis until i was 23 and if you've never been here before you may not know what gastroparesis is this is my vlog channel it's not my main channel I'll link my main channel down in the description below for you guys so you can follow it. I started YouTube basically to spread awareness about this rare stomach disorder called gastroparesis. If you want to know what it's about, you should go to the link that I linked down in the description below to my main channel. Very shameful plug. I... But I did get sick when I was 23 and so now it's so much harder for me to handle just daily normal life things. Nausea, vomiting, malnutrition, fatigue, bloating, daily and constantly makes it so hard for me to just wake up in the morning and do things that I couldn't really even imagine what it would be like to be on set for 10, 12 hours of the day or dealing with people that cause me so much stress and anxiety that it causes even more symptoms because yes stress and anxiety do play a f play an effect on my symptoms so those are my experiences with acting and modeling I'm not trying to like poo poo Pew, pew. Those are just my thoughts and opinions from my experiences um, acting and modeling. It's definitely not easy. Maybe I am letting doubt and fear rule my life. I know there's not a lot of guarantees in life, but I just think I'm being a little more realistic when it comes to trying to have acting in the film and TV industry as a career. 
Nowadays, I am just trying to get my radiology degree and even that has been difficult just because of my health issues and my financial status because I am in medical debt. Surprise, surprise. Anyways, thanks for listening to me ramble on and maybe you learned a little bit more about me. Maybe you already knew. If you guys like this video, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe and also hit that notification bell. <gasps> Ew, that one was gross. <clears throat> Ooh, there we go. To stay up to date with when I post, which is supposed to be every other weekish, but I know I've been posting pretty frequently on this channel. I've kind of just had a lot to say. Don't forget to follow my main channel, which I linked down in the description below, and I will see you guys in the next vlog. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys. Oh, oh, okay. Bye. <laughs>